Hello children, how are you all? I hope you all are safe and healthy at home. Your new academic year has started. This year, your English textbook is Magic Place. We will start with the first lesson, Adrift at Sea by Jan Martel. This lesson is an extract from the story, Life of Pi, which is made into a movie with the same name. Many of you might have watched that movie also. There are two characters in the story. The first one is Pai Patel, a young boy of 16 years old, and the second one is Richard Parker, a royal Bengal tiger. Both of them are stuck in a sea. Pai is in a raft and Richard Parker is in the lifeboat. It's a stormy night and the sea is very rough. But Pai is not affected by these external factors. He is scared of the tiger and he wants to get rid of it. This lesson is divided into three parts. The first part is from page number 1 to page number 3, the second paragraph. The second part is from page number 3, second para third paragraph to the end of page number 4. And the third part is from page number 5 till the end of the story. I will read the lesson paragraph wise. After reading one or two paragraphs, I will explain it to you all. You are expected to read the lesson along with me in your mind. In this story, wherever they have used the word I or me, it refers to pi, which means Pi is narrating the story. Okay. So I'll start the story now. Look into your books, children. Adrift at Sea by Jan Martel. Life of Pi is the winner of the 2002 Man Booker Prize. This is the story of Pi Patel, a 16-year-old boy who finds himself adrift on a raft at sea. His only companion is a royal Bengal tiger named Richard Parker. In this extract, Pai is thinking of ways to deal with the tiger. Many of the plans he comes up with seem terribly cruel, but he is in serious danger and is driven by fear. The rain grew stronger and the sea rougher as the night progressed. The rope to the lifeboat tautened with a jerk rather than with a tug and the rocking of the raft became more pronounced and erratic. It continued to float, rising above every wave. But the surf of every breaking wave rode clear across it, washing around me like a river washing around a boulder. The sea was warmer than the rain, but it meant that no part of me stayed dry that night. So in this paragraph, Pai is narrating his plight, his pathetic condition, as he is drifting on a wild and stormy sea in a raft. The rope, which is tied to the lifeboat, is being pulled by the huge waves, and even his raft is jerking. The word totten means stretched or to pull. The word pronounced means prominent or to feel easily. The word erratic means irregular. He can clearly feel the irregular movement of the raft. The huge waves are hitting the raft like a river water hits a boulder. What is a boulder? A huge rock, a big rock. The rain water is very cold compared to the sea water and Pi is completely wet or is completely drenched. Now the next paragraph. During those long cold dark hours, as the pattering of the invisible rain got to be deafening and the sea hissed and coiled and tossed me about, I held on to one thought, Richard Parker. I had several plans to get rid of him so that the lifeboat might be mine. Here Pai saying that it was a long cold night and the rhythmic sound of the rainfall was growing louder. Pattering means light rhythmic tapping sound of the rain. 
The rough waves tossed him in the water and Pi was having a tough time. Where is Pi now? He's in the raft, isn't it? And Richard Parker was sitting in the lifeboat. But Pi was not affected by these external factors. Only one thought was disturbing him. And that was Richard Parker. Richard Parker, the Royal Bengal Tiger, was his enemy now. A big threat to him. So Pi tries to stay calm in this difficult time and he was thinking of different ways to get rid of this tiger. Pi thinks that the tiger could be more dangerous than the rough weather. He wants to throw this tiger somehow, kill him or throw him off and get, take control over the lifeboat. So let's see what are the different plans he's making. The next paragraph, plan number one. Push him off the lifeboat. What good would that do? Even if I did manage to show 450 pounds of a living fierce animal off the lifeboat, tigers are accomplished swimmers. In the Sundarbans, they have been known to swim 5 miles in open choppy waters. If he found himself unexpectedly overboard, Richard Parker would simply tread water, climb back aboard and make me pay the price for my treachery. Here, the word shove means to push off. The word fierce means terrific. And the word accomplished means expert or skilled. Accomplished swimmers means expert swimmers. So the first plan which Pai thought was to push Richard Parker off the lifeboat. That means to push him into the water. Then he rethinks the plan. Even if he manages to push this huge terrific tiger, which is almost 450 pounds, into the water, Richard Parker will swim back and attack Pai. What do you mean by Sundarbans? Sundarbans are delta region in the eastern India, that is the Gangetic delta region you can say. This region is the home to a number of royal Bengal tigers. And those tigers which live here are expert swimmers. So Pai knows that even if he manages to push this Richard Parker into the water, this tiger will swim back and attack Pai as Pai cheated him. Pai cheated him, no children. He pushed him off into the water, isn't it? He wanted to kill him. The word treachery means cheating or to be disloyal. So Pai is sure that plan number one is not going to work. So he thinks of a second plan. Let's see what is the next plan, the second plan. Plan number two. Kill him with six morphine syringes from the medicine chest. But I had no idea what effect they would have on him. Would they be enough to kill him? And how exactly was I supposed to get the morphine into his system? I could remotely think of surprising him once. For an instant. But to surprise him long enough? To give him six consecutive injections? Impossible. All I would do by pricking him with the needle would be to get a cuff in return that would take my head off. So the second plan was to kill Richard Parker with six doses of morphine injections. What do you mean by morphine? Morphine is a medicine or a drug which is used to reduce pain. A sort of painkiller. Pai had a medicine box in which he found six morphine syringes. So he thinks of injecting these morphine into the tiger's body. But is not sure if these six doses would be enough to kill him. And how could he inject six doses of this medicine into the tiger's body? Maybe he can give one injection. Of course, the tiger will be very surprised to get a prick, isn't it? But do you think Richard Parker will allow Pai to give him six continuous injections? Impossible. Even if 
he pricks him once, the tiger will attack Pai and kill him. The word remotely means slightly. The word cuff, cuff means to get hit in return. To get injury in return. So if Pai is going to attack him with this injection or is going to inject this medicine into his system after the first injection only Richard Parker will attack him and he may take his head off also. So Pai is sure his second plan will also not work. So he thinks of a third plan. Let's see what is the third plan. Look into your book children. Page number 3. Second paragraph. Plan number 3. Attack him with all available weaponry. Ridiculous. I was in Tarzan. I was a puny, feeble, vegetarian life form. In India, it took riding atop great big elephants and shooting with powerful rifles to kill tigers. What was I supposed to do here? Fire off a rocket flare in his face? Go at him with a hatchet in each hand and a knife between my teeth? Finish him off with a straight and curving sewing needles? If I managed to nick him, it would be a feat. In return, he would tear me apart, limb by limb, organ by organ. For if there is one thing more dangerous than a healthy animal is an injured animal. Now, when Pai realized that the first two plans are not going to work, he thinks of a third plan. And what was that plan? He thought of attacking Richard Parker with all the available weapons. Whatever weapons he could get, he will attack Richard Parker with that. Wasn't that funny, children? He was not Tarzan. He was a very tiny, weak, vegetarian human being. The word puny means tiny. The word feeble means very weak. So Pai knows very well that he was not strong enough to attack this huge tiger. He recollects that in India, people sit on big elephants and shoot with powerful guns to kill tigers. What can Pai do here? Should he fire a rocket on his face? Or should he take an axe in each arm? and a knife in between his teeth and attack Richard Parker? Do you think it's possible, children? Or better still, should he kill the tiger with some sewing needles? Even if he manages to injure the tiger, it would be a great achievement. The word Nick means to injure him, to cut him, to give an injury. The word feet means an achievement. But do you think Richard Parker will sit there and allow Pai to do this? Never. Richard Parker will attack Pai and tear him apart. Pai knows very well that an injured animal is more aggressive and more dangerous than an healthy animal. So this plan was also not practical. Do you think he can go with some tiny weapons like some uh, hatchet? The word hatchet means a small axe. Can you go and attack the tiger with one or two axe, a knife, some sewing needles? He cannot, children. The tiger is more powerful. And if he injures also, the injured tiger will be more aggressive. He will attack him. So, this plan is not going to work. Now, Pai has to think some other plans.